Welcome back to Switched to Linux. We have a nice video on top of the world. And today I want to talk about, yes, Linux is now getting too fragmented. All right, we are getting too many distributions. I'm going to tell you about some of the experiences over the last few weeks that I've had that have led me to this ultimate conclusion. Uh, before we proceed too far, uh, we do have a channel sponsor. I think that'd be a great one to highlight them. This is Malleable Computer. Find the link down below. You can get some excellent high-end Linux laptops. Uh, just check the link in the description down below. But with that, what we're going to do here is talk about Linux being too fragmented. First and foremost, I reject the idea that all of these Linux developers should come together and build one perfect Linux distribution. There will never be a perfect Linux distribution. It's not going to happen. Okay, there's too many differences of opinion. Wait, what desktop environment? There's your first fight. It's like, oh, GNOME, it's the best one. I hate GNOME. I don't think it's a bad desktop environment. It just doesn't work with my flow. Some people like XFCE. Some people like simple Windows managers, i3, uh, bspawn. There's so many different options out there. I reject the idea that we need to come together and do one perfect Linux distribution. It ain't gonna happen, okay? Stop pretending. But Linux is becoming too fragmented, and this is the experience that I have encountered. Now, I've had to drop two different distro reviews in the last two weeks because I have spent the time to download distributions that don't boot or don't install. Things are not being tested. Now, I have not in fact encountered this with large distributions with a lot of backers. Linux Mint always works great. Ubuntu, as much as I don't work like it, it works great. They have a big team behind it. They got big money behind it. They have a lot of testing behind it. It is a good distribution. I'm just not a fan of its direction and its philosophy, which is another reason why combining everybody together, build one perfect Linux distribution isn't gonna work. I don't want a corporate Linux distro, okay? Uh, that's where I'm at. I don't know where you're at. I don't want a corporate Linux distro. I want a free Linux distro. So, but in the last couple of weeks, I have spent the time to download distributions and for me being on the road, it's not always easy to do. I don't have uh, as I don't have an unlimited bandwidth, I don't have a terabyte data cap, I have 150 gigabytes. Your average Linux distribution these days is around three gigabytes. I need to down use a lot of my bandwidth, a lot of my, my data in order to download a distribution. And uh, one of my other points is sometimes these do not have good download links and my downloads keep failing. And so that is becoming more of a problem. So we have to examine the uh, different issues here. So what I found is a few different issues with some Linux distributions where I am noticing we're getting a lot of independent fly-by-night distributions that don't have a lot of backing. They're not doing a lot of QAing. It might work great on their system. They push out to the world, they're all excited, and they haven't tested for, I don't know, five different computer systems. I've encountered this problem in web design for a long time. You know, I'll build a website and I'm QAing it across multiple browsers and computers, but somebody uh, that I'm passing it to, they may not think to do that. And so, well, it works great for me. Yeah, but it doesn't for everybody else. This has uh, been a problem as we move from more of your static wits to your responsive elements. Like, I want this exactly right here. You can't do that because somebody else has a different type of computer. They have a different screen size. They have different elements. And that in and of itself is, <laughs> you're not going to get there perfectly because the site, purpose of the website is to make sure that no matter what your scalability is, it looks good not looks exactly the way I think it needs to look. Well, we're seeing that in the Linux distribution. So here's some of the observations I made around some of these smaller distros. And I might start looking at this and saying, if your distro fails on this list, I may not even consider looking at it. So keep this in mind. Here's the first thing, and this is the biggest rookie mistake. No hashes. Two of the distributions I have downloaded recently that have failed to work or install there's no hash. I can't tell if the download I have is the correct download. Now this has a security functions. This also has, did I download this correctly function? Remember this, a number of years ago, Linux Mint's website was hacked and the hackers distributed 
a malicious copy of Linux Mint. It was only live on the site for about an hour or two. Anybody who checked the hash and the hash failed, they knew there was something wrong with this distribution. If you checked your hashes, you were not impacted by this. All right. Now that was a WordPress flaw. We're going to forgive that one. That kind of happens sometimes. And it's only happened once and it hasn't happened since. But I have seen it and I looked at this, this, this distro. I downloaded it. I tried to install it. It wouldn't even boot. I get you know, no boot, no, no bootable disk. There's no hash. I can't check if my download is co correct or complete. I can't check if it's malicious. I can't check what it is. Two di di distros in the last week, couple weeks I've looked at. No hash. I can't do a hash comparison to see if it's right. Number two, download links. The number of distributions that are only available on SourceForge makes me want to go up, jump off this cliff. Okay, that, no. <laughs> have multiple download links well that takes some bandwidth yes it takes a little bit of resources and maybe a few more people looking at it whether you're doing a torrent link or whether you're doing uh multiple different uh downloads i'm not saying you have to have hundreds i'm saying more than just source forge please multiple download links are a good thing now um some of these i've either gotten failure to boot or in one case Failure to install. One down one download, I got it. It boots fine. It gets in the live key. It runs to the installer. There's something wrong with the installer. The automatic partitioning is not working. And the automatic partitioner, it's it's creating one small boot sector of 500 megabytes, trying to install the entire operating system into that and leaving the whole rest of the disk completely unallocated. There is no, um, there's no documentation about how to par manually partition your disk. And it doesn't even look like you have the option to really do it. There's an option to manually partition your disk, but there's no option to say, this is where the mount goes. This is where the boot goes. This is where the root goes. There's none of that. And so we're getting distributions that are failing to boot or failing to install without the documentation and without like basic testing. How do you push out a giant distribution? Say, here it is. It's been live for two weeks and it doesn't work. And I think the developers know it doesn't work because I jumped on their discord server and asked a question and a half a day, nobody said anything, but apparently nobody else can get that thing to work either. So. Um, they're not QA. They're not really tested. They got, I think what they did is they got one of them to work on one desktop environment and they just out of the desktop environment, something else and threw it up there and didn't test the second one, I guess, because I guess the other desktop environment works. So I know, we'll have a look at that. All right. So the next issue that we have in Linux becoming too fragmented is that we're not getting a lot of reasons to make a lot of new distros. I get the reason to have a good maybe 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 distributions. Once we get beyond that, what are we doing? What are we doing? All right. Are these differences just software? Are these differences? Ooh, I like this theming better. Are the differences actual stuff? Uh, we did the cache OS. That actually does some interesting things. It's Arch. It takes some kernel modifications to support modern architecture. It does a few different things with the packages. They have a wiki. They have documentation. They have a lot of options. They have a lot of downloads. Great. Perfect. I'm not saying that we need to not have cache, but some of these other ones I looked at, what's the purpose? What's the objective? So I think what's happens is Linux is becoming right to that slight adoption phase where a bunch more people are jumping on and everybody and their brothers like, oh, I need to make my own Linux distribution. This is why I have never had the desire to make it. I am not going to make the switch to Linux distribution. No, I'm going to point you to Linux Mint, Endeavor OS, MX Linux, Peppermint, Debian, Arch, something else. I, I don't care. Okay. I'm not going to spend my time, my resource making what I think is the perfect Linux distribution. I, no, why? We have too many of them. All right. So yes, in my opinion, Linux is becoming way, way, way too fragmented. I do not support in any way, shape or form the uh, just the, the simple idea of going, uh, you know, one Linux distribution, let's redirect everything to that. I don't support, oh, let's just have two or three. 
I like the variety. I like we got Debian and Mint and Ubuntu and, and MX and, and uh, you know, I like all of these different options because all of us come to the view with, uh, with some different perspectives in mind. And I want to be cognizant of that and support that. But when we get to the having all these distributions and everybody and their brothers putting out a new distribution and they fail the boot and they don't have hashes and you can only download it from SourceForge, we're getting to the point where there's too much Linux fragmentation. That is the point where that starts to happen. With that, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, once again, have a look at the link in the description for Malleable Computers. Well, we're going to wrap up here. I'll kind of show you the cliff that uh, these modern distributions might throw me off of. Whoa, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, wonderful scenery. With that, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.